The Stirling engine is 200 years old now. It's a reliable engine, it's a silent engine, and it's a very clean engine. It relies upon heated air expanding and pushing the piston. By comparison, the steam engine uses hot steam to push the piston. The Stirling engine, hot air. The steam engine is a lot more powerful than the Stirling engine, so it's rather important that the Stirling engine exactly uses the expansion capability of the gas of the hot air. The video you are about to see is the result of the collaboration and efforts of Stirling Society members, in particular Austin Williams and Dennis Cowdery. They have developed the idea and now it's been fabricated into a demonstration engine. What you will see are the two fundamental parts of a Stirling engine, the displacer chamber where the air is heated and pressure is created, and the piston cylinder where the stroke of the piston allows that hot air pressure to be expanded. The particular part of interest is that the stroke of the piston is variable and exactly matches the expansion capabilities of the gas. This results in the crank disc for the displacer rotating at a different speed for the crank disc for the piston. This is why we call it the asynchronous Stirling engine. Have a look at the video. OK, we're off. Note the temperature 200C for the hot cap. The cold cap is at room temperature. The pressure indicated here is in kilopascals. Now to start with I'll operate the engine and move the displacer manually and you will see the working piston move. The effective pressure is two and a half kilopascals or about 0.3 of a pound per square inch. So every time the displacer moves, the flywheel will rotate slightly. OK, let's go on to a, an automated mode here. That's going around at 120 RPM, the displacer that is. The main engine is rotating at a speed determined by the size of the gear and the stroke of the working piston. The engine can be stalled and when released will immediately begin operation. It can be stopped at a whim and started without any hesitation. This is a singular advantage of this arrangement. The pressures involved here are extremely low. In reality, rather than being 0.3 of a pound per square inch, it's more likely to be 30. We'll look a bit more carefully at the engine itself. And there you can see it gently going to and fro. The piston itself is not designed to be efficient. This entire rig is designed for demonstration purposes only. In a practical engine, the hot cap would be at maybe four or 500 degrees centigrade the heat transfer efficiency would be much higher. So, to summarise, the asynchronous engine design addresses major issues of the Stirling engine. How does you start the engine quickly and easily? How can you stop the engine quickly and easily? How can you vary the speed and control the speed these are matters that will be described in full detail in the Stirling Engine Society newsletters. Membership and contact details are in front of you on the screen. So to read the reports and receive the newsletters, please join the Stirling Engine Society. Thank you.